So many of us are increasingly concerned about the future of our planet and what it's gonna be like for all of us. And there are a number of scientists and academics who believe there are some increasingly interesting signs and warnings that are now coming from the Amazon basin in South America. So here to talk about that is Pedro Andrade. He is a Brazilian author, journalist, and television presenter. He has a show coming up on Vice TV known as Unknown Amazon. It's a program that debuts on July the 13th at 10 p.m. all about the Amazon. Pedro, welcome to the program. First of all, explain the significance of the Amazon. Great to be here. Well, I mean, whatever happens in the Amazon really is gonna impact us all. Uh, that's just a fact. I mean, it's easy to look at the Amazon as this far place, this distant place. But when you actually get down there, you understand that, uh, I mean, there will be an impact in terms of climate change, in terms of global warming, in terms of sustainability. Uh, so for me, it was the experience of a lifetime and it was really eye opening. I've always dreamed of going to the Amazon. I think the Amazon fascinates us all. Uh, but I'm, I was born and raised in Brazil, but I've been living in New York for 20 years. I host a travel show, I went to 65 countries and I just now had a chance to actually fulfill this dream and go down there. And I was blown away, uh, blown away and shocked you know, and worried. I mean, whatever happens in the Amazon, like I said, this place is one of the most uh, environmentally important places on earth and that's a fact. You're saying this is your first time down the Amazon. What surprised you about the experience? Because you have traveled so much around the world and you've seen so much, what jumped out to you? Well, I think what surprised me was the fact that you know, we're used to reading about the political turmoil in Brazil. We're used to reading about wildlife trafficking. We're used to reading about um, wildfires in the Amazon, but we forget that, I mean, about 10 million people live in this place. So I, I was curious to know who actually uh, lived, who were the guardians of the Amazon. And unfortunately, I was shocked by how um, dire, how worrisome the situation is. When I was born, 1% of the Amazon had been destroyed. Now 21% of the Amazon, as we know, have been destroyed. If we reach a number like 39, 40%, we'll reach a, a tipping point and the Amazon will become this huge savanna. Uh, this will destroy cities. I mean, it will raise the sea levels. Um, and I, I was also surprised to see that there are ways to actually profit and explore the Amazon. I didn't know that was possible. I think empowering indigenous communities, for example, is key to find a solution. Well, what are some of the other ways? In other words, that you can essentially use capitalism both to help the indigenous people, but also protect this, this treasure? Well, we need to give these people that live in the Amazon opportunity. You know, so uh, I saw a lot of people, for example, uh, in one of the episodes, we go to a Quilombola community. Quilombola are communities that are made of slave descendants, slaves that were able to run away. For you to have an idea, um, during the 17th and 18th century, about 450,000 slaves were brought here from Africa. Over 5 million were taken to Brazil. So you have all of these slices of Senegal, for example, in the middle of the largest rainforest on earth. And we have a president that is extremely racist. We have a president that treats indigenous people like they're worth less than cattle. So unless we give these communities opportunities to work, to be important, to survive, or you have to make indigenous reserves and leave them actually alone because they were able to be self-sufficient for centuries. So what we can't do is just open the Amazon so people, not just Brazilians, but Chinese people, American corporation, for example, to walk into the Amazon, profit and just leave that whole territory destroyed. We need to actually give them the power, the people that live in the Amazon to preserve the Amazon, if you will. And it sounds like their economic conditions though are getting worse. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, for you to have an idea, uh, you have 10 million people living in, in the Amazon, but you have about 40 to 60 million heads of cattle. This means that farming has been destroying the Amazon. It's a humongous problem. I mean, one third of the trees around the world are in the Amazon. 20% of the uh, flowing fresh water in the planet is in the Amazon. So like I said, uh, if you actually pay attention to these numbers, if the Amazon was a country, it would be the sixth largest country in the world. And once again, uh, we 
go about our days and we just think that whatever happens there won't affect us. It's not true. We really should be protecting these communities. Was there something specific that you saw in nature of the Amazon or something maybe that you're featuring in the show that really jumped out to you in terms of the breathtaking nature of the beauty and the species that are there? Oh my God, yes. I mean, we have an entire episode dedicated to wildlife. And so uh, I went to one of the largest rehabilitation centers in the Amazon. Uh, we rescued baby monkeys, we captured uh, giant caimans, uh, we uh, monitored giant eagles, the only bears in South America. It's just really breathtaking. I, it, this sounds silly. I, I usually say that. Some people, some journalists are you know, obsessed with sports or with animals or wildlife. I'm usually just obsessed with the human aspect of places. But it's impossible to go down to the Amazon and not understand the value of this wildlife. You can't find anything even remotely similar anywhere in the world. Pedro, what was it like filming and producing this in the midst of the pandemic? It was a massive challenge. I'm really proud of the way uh, we you know, took on this challenge. I, I think Vice is that network that will go places where other networks won't go. At moments that other networks won't go. Talk to people that people like other networks are scared of talking to. And once they agreed to you know, take this journey on with me, um, I, I think we were really responsible. 70. PCR 70 COVID tests later, uh, none of us got sick. I mean, the the tragedy that could happen if, God forbid, I brought any kind of virus into uh, one of these tribes that could, you know, decimate pummel uh, an entire ethnicity. So uh, I can sleep, you know, <laughs> in peace, knowing that there were no indigenous people. None of us in the crew got harmed, but it, it was. Very challenging. I mean, the, the quarantining alone, that was a huge obstacle. Were there any dangers in terms of like trying to convince the indigenous population that you were there to essentially try to help them and not to essentially take advantage of them? Um, there were a lot of dangerous situations. I was held hostage by 250 armed indigenous people. I was death sworn. I had to be evacuated. A couple of times from the Amazon. I know that the way I'm talking about the show, it sounds like a heavy show, but I think what differentiates this show from other shows about the the Amazon is the fact that we we were able to have these tough conversations, to talk to the villains, to talk to the victims, and also to have fun. I think by the end of this series, people will have a better understanding of how priceless this place is, and I think they'll want to go. They might not want to go to you know explore the illegal mining. Uh, practices that I explored. And uh, once again, being held hostage is something that was terrifying. But I think the cause is so valuable, like we're talking about something that's so important that it was well worth it. What was it that uh, so angered the people who took you hostage? And, and was this you know, on one of your visits to one of these illegal mines or was this another part of the Amazon? And, and how did, I mean, what was going through your mind when this was happening? Well, to put it in a nutshell, I had interviewed this woman who's a force, like she is a reference in terms of indigenous rights, uh, Alessandra. And she told me that she wanted everyone to, you know, stay as far away from their community as possible. How much she hated the fact that indigenous people have been colonized, have been threatened, have been murdered for decades, for centuries, actually. Uh, and then I found out that some people, 250, 300 Munduruku, which are her ethnicity, had blocked the busiest, most important road in the Amazon because they wanted to be able to work on illegal mining. They wanted to be able to profit from their own indigenous land. So I did what I think any journalist would do. I went down there to understand what the situation was and talk to them. And in a matter of 15 seconds, uh, we were surrounded by armed indigenous people. I mean, as you know, in this kind of job, things can go wrong really fast. Uh, and thankfully, we're, we're all okay, but it was scary. After this whole experience of putting the show together, does it leave you optimistic or pessimistic, both about the future of the Amazon and the future of our planet? Um, 
there are reasons to be very optimistic. I think there is a generational gap that is undeniable. You see young people really taking charge of this battle and really understanding how important this is. I think today our generation is a lot more aware than my parents generation, for example. So that gives me optimism. I think the first thing you can do in order to solve a problem is to diagnose the problem. And I think we've gotten to this place. With that said, I think there are a lot of money hungry people, horrific politicians that are a huge threat to the Amazon and to the world. Pedro Andrade, the show is Unknown Amazon. It premieres on Vice TV on Tuesday, July the 13th at 10 p.m. A series will follow after that. Pedro is a Brazilian author, journalist, television presenter, the host of this remarkable show. Pedro, thanks so much for joining us on the conversation. We appreciate it and good luck to you. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.